Hello and welcome to Series 2, Episode 4 of Saturday Morning Nostalgia. The year is still 2011. We're on the last episode of this series. Next week we're going to be taking a break for just, just a week um, because we've got the new set coming out. Uh, and so that will give me a chance to do a bit of unboxings. And I think going forward what I'm going to do is, is do um, a series which obviously is based on a certain year and then have a one week break to do something else and then in the next sort of block of four episodes of the series and so on going forward I think that's where I want to go with this um, so in this particular episode and um, I mentioned this last week what I decided to do was because the Innistrad set came out on September the 30th and would have meant last week's episode would have been super long I've moved it into this last quarter from October to December so it's in with that because there's only with that in there's still just going to be a couple of things to talk about which is Innistrad and the premium deck Graveborn. So starting off with Innistrad. So Innistrad came out on September the 30th. If we f f use uh, the player's guide to sort of illustrate this as I'm, I'm chatting. Um, so it was a 264 card set, large set, 107 commons, 67 uncommons, 59 rares, 16 mythics and 15 basic lands. Let's just use the encyclopedia to have a look at the artwork here. So obviously we get the impression that uh, this particular set is very much... Um, imbued with uh, horror tropes um, and the artwork reflects that I think so we've got our plains our islands our swamps mountains and forests so there's basically three artworks of each type of land hence 15 basic lands <clears throat> the set came in the 15 or have we looked at 15 16 card boosters so 15 magic cards out of that one fifth one out one out of the 15 was uh, was a land and the 16th card was an, a, like an advert card the uh, cards were also available in five intro packs there were two event decks and a fat pack was released so in terms of themes and mechanics in the set uh, double face cards were a thing uh, the presence of, or the idea, concept of, of being able to curse a player was also a thing in this set. Yeah, there was a Graveyard Matters theme. Now also in the set, uh, humans mattered in, in lots of different ways. And alongside that, there was a heavy tribal theme. Now the way that Wizards did that, um, there's a couple of ways that, that that can sort of show up in a set. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll have certain um, key cards at common. I'm oh, sorry, that's key cards at sort of uncommon or rare. Um, I must admit, one thing to bear in mind with this is that the tribal element was, um, what's the best way to say this? was tied in with certain colour combinations but what they didn't seem to do as they have done with with a lot of sets is use what I think I call like draft indicators where they'll create um, cards that are uncommon which are two colour cards and uh, are indicators to make you go down a certain drafting route. Now they didn't do that in the case of tribal indicators they didn't have for instance um, in this particular set, um, certain um, multicolored cards that were two color. They did have some. So, for instance, um, if we just go through the tribal um, classes, so there was spirits, which were white blue, zombies, which were blue black, vampires, which were black red werewolves were red green and humans i remember i said it was a humans matters set as well were green white now what they did do was at rare they did print of 
Geist of Saint Traft, Traft which is white blue, which is a legendary creature, spirit cleric. They printed Grim Grin Corpse Brawn uh, in blue black, which is a zombie warrior, and Olivia Voldaren in black red, which was a vampire. So you can see they've sort of covered three of those of the five sort of tribe colour combinations. <clears throat> but what you'll notice is as you go through the, uh, the set in those colours, you'll see obviously heavy presence of those particular tribes in the appropriate colours. So if we're looking in white, we're going to see uh, a presence of both humans and spirits. If we're looking in blue, as our next example, we're going to see a presence of um, spirits and zombies. If we go on to black, then we're going to see um, zombies and vampires in black, and then so on as we go into red. Um, we're going to see vampires and werewolves. And then when we move into green, uh, we are going to see werewolves and humans. And then back to, um, as I said, we, with white, we would see um, humans and spirits. So keywords abilities to look out for as we're going through individual cards in a moment. Uh, things like flashback was in the set, transform, a fight and a something called morbid which we'll have a look at from the uh, point of view of the non-basic lands uh, they were doing some interesting things here we had uh, tap lands uh, so clifftop retreats a good example of this so we've got clifftop retreat into the battlefield tapped unless you control a mountain or a plains tap add red or green to your mana pool and there were a cycle of those for the various uh, colour combinations that we've already sort of mentioned. Um, well, actually, the, what, here's where it gets interesting. So, what they did at Rare, we can look at this, is the colour combinations that they used at Rare were actually enemy colours. And the... Um, if you notice, the tribes are all in allied colours. So there's a quite a difference there. But again, you know, we, we've, these are um, dual, dual lands that are at rare. But what they did do is there were a series of uh, utility, allied utility lands, which were on colour. And there were five of those, a cycle of those again. Those were uh, Gavany Township, Keswick Wolf Run, Moorland Haunt, Nephilia Drown Yard, and Stensia Blood Hall. What's in there? There was also a cycle of um, Allied Common, Allied colored common flashback cards and we'll see again what I mean by that and enemy uncommon flashback cards so what they had done was there was a casting cost in one color and then the flashback cost was in another notable cards to look out for again as we're going through if, if I've actually got these Delver of Secrets was a pretty important card as was Snapcaster Mage Geist of Scent Traft I don't think I've got a copy of but we saw that in the Encyclopedia, Olivia Voldaren, Liliana of the Veil, Intangible Virtue, and, and Di Diagraph Ghoul, to name but a few. So let's just see what, what sort of rares I pulled here. Um, probably opened quite a few packs for this. Uh, I went, actually went to the Dark Ascension pre release, so I would have got some packs from that. Uh, because that would have had uh, four packs from Innistrad and two from Dark Stain Ascension. Uh, plus all the, the sort of various fat packs that I opened and, and other. Obviously opening the intro packs I would have got some uh, 
boosters in that as well. So let's just look through this. We've got uh, Angel of Flight Alabaster. Uh, four and a white creature angel with flying at the beginning of your upkeep. Return target spirit card from your graveyard to your hand. Elite Inquisitor. It's got first strike and vigilance protection from vampires, from werewolves and from zombies. We should see several, you know, basically protection spells where tribes matter in here. And Nevermore. One and two white uh, enchantment. It's never mind. It's the battlefield. Name a non-land card. The name card can't be cast. So I've got a foil Thraben Sentry here at common, and this is a good example here of a a card which is double faced. So we've got Thraben Sentry on one side, transforming into Thraben Militia on the other. Cackling Counterpart, Mirror Mad Phant Phantasm. And Snapcaster Mage, I mean that was pretty mentioned, that was pretty important. Strumgar Sturmgast Geist, Army of the Damned, puts 13 2 2 black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield, tapped for 5 and 3 black. Has flashback of seven and three black. You may cast this card from your graveyard for its flashback cost and exile it. Blood gift demon. Another zombie uh, matters card. We've got endless ranks of the dead. The beginning of upkeep put X two two black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is half of the number of zombies you control rounded down. My understanding on this says they really worked quite hard to try and get. Um, the the flavour right on on the zombie cards. So with the bloodline. Now oh, here's a here's a curse card. So curse of, of stalked prey enchantment or a curse enchant player. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to an enchanted player, put a one one counter on that creature. The so foil handwear watchkeeper. Heretic's punishment. Crew in Outlaw, another card here, which is uh, got two faces to it. Crew in Outlaw, transforming into Terror of Crew in Pass. Four Caravan Vigil, Daybreak Ranger. So there were some Planeswalkers in the deck, one of which was Garrick Relentless. Lucky enough to pull that. Gutter Grimes, another rare. Moldegraph Monstrosity. Foiled Spider Spawning. We've got um, a white, a blue black card here. So it's one of the few multicolored cards in the set. Evil Twin. That's a shapeshifter. A couple of nice foils. Got Demon Bark. Albert and Graveyard Shovel. Here's one of, well, actually a couple of, a couple of the um, utility lands in Allied Colours. So we've got the Gavany Township. Let's just get that out so you can see that a bit clearer. So it's a land tap. Add one to your mana pool. Two green white tap. Put a one one counter on each creature you control. And our Kessig Wolf run. Utility in red green. So tap add one to your mana pool. X red green. Target creature gets plus X plus zero. And gaze trample until end of turn. Sort of cards that are very popular in EDH. And here's one of the uh, tap lands. So this is Sulphur Falls. So falls enters the battlefield tapped unless you control an island or a mountain. Tap add blue or red to your mana pool. So there we have the commons and the foils. Actually there was one other thing I wanted to show you because I've mentioned this before. So most I think most people are aware of this, but you may may not be. Um, this is actually was the fat pack. So if you're very careful. 
um, and I sort of use a, a fairly blunt knife to do this. Uh, just run it down the edge here. It's got that sort of um, difficult to describe, but that 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 sort of gunky glue stuff um, that they use to stick uh, CDs to the covers of magazines. Well, that's what's used here. So if you're really careful and you run it down here, you can get this open, take that stuff off fairly easy once you've got it open, and you have some nice long form artwork. Uh, and all the uh, yeah all the fat packs have this. There you go. All right, we'll have a look at some commons and uncommons. Didn't um, open quite as many. <laughs> cards uh, packs as I did with um, with last week's if you remember we were looking through what was it um, M12 there was a lot of stuff okay so just go through this again want something to watch out for like I said it is it, the very you know the, the real tribal theme here but also, you know, when we're looking at starting off with white and blue, we're going to see flyers. So I think with any magic set, um, one of the nice things um, as, as you sort of develop as a player um, is you start to notice things that are probably going to be in those colours in every single set. And that's really helpful, actually, with, with drafting. There's certain things that you can do in drafting if you're not familiar with a new set, you can always keep your eye open. So you know, there's probably going to be a blue white flyers deck in, in in a draft environment that you can draft. There's probably going to be you know, sort of black, uh, sorry, red red green um, aggro with you know burn spells and big creatures and a sort of you know black red aggro that that sort of stuff. So uh, looking for uh, a common drafting archetypes in in two colours is always a good a good start when you're sort of unfamiliar with with a set I think. So we've got uh, Abby Griffin, Abyssin Priest, Chapel Geist, another flyer. So remember I was mentioning about spirits being in white and and also uh, humans, Doom Traveller. A one drop that when it dies, you can put a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. There's a um, counter theme in white. I don't know how extensive that is in this set. Now here's one of these things I was talking about with the uh, allied colour flashback at common. So Feeling of Dread was one and a white to cast tap up to two target creatures pretty straightforward and then it has this allied color flashback cost on it of one and a blue so you may cast this card from your graveyard for its flashback cost that was the same for all flashback cards that was what flashback was it's just the cost would change basically um for its flashback cost then exile it Fiend Hunter, obviously in white you'd expect ways of being able to exile creatures. Another spirit, which pumps other spirits. So also what we're going to see here is a Lord type effects, but on attached to um, single colours. Sometimes you might see a Lord type effect where you've got a two colour uh, theme in in a set where you know that that's that, that might be attached to a multicolor card that was on color for that but what we might see in here as we go through is it's possible we might see things like this where this one you know it's other spirit creatures you control get plus one plus sorry plus zero plus one close ghostly possession so gives the creatures flying and prevents combat damage Mausole mausoleum card uh, mausoleum guard you can see this thing as well of when something dies put 
white, in this case, white spirit creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. It's a pump spell with lifelink. Uh, um, enchantment destruction. Another. This is so. This would be the uh, enemy color flashback card. But these and these were uncommon. So this one casting costs in white. The flashback cost is in red. Rebuke, destroy a target attacking creature. It was got one of those in white. That sort of type of rebuke effect. Selfless Cathar, Silver Chase Fox, Smite the Monstrous, Spectral Rider, so we've got uh, Intimidate in white, Thraben Pure Bloods, so Vanilla Hound, Thraben Sentry, we saw that earlier, we had a foil of that, Unruly Mob, so again, Counters Matter. It's interesting in white, you also had a way of dealing with spirits. <coughs> Village bell ringer, there's flash on this one, voiceless spirit with flying and first strike. So that was the sort of things that we might be seeing in white if we were opening packs. Because remember when you're, when you're opening packs up, as I've said many times before, you know, the, the cards you're going to see most are obviously commons and uncommons because there's a larger percentage of those within it within any set so another card that gives other spirits so this one's in blue uh, battleground geist flying other spirit creatures you control get plus one plus zero claustrophobia so we've got a tap down effect here and here's another curse curse of the bloody tome there's there's our delver a Delver, single blue, so 1-1. One, one. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card. If an instant or sorcery card is revealed, this way transform Delver of Secrets. So that gives you some clue as when you're building a Delver deck, what you've got to go for, what synergies you're looking for. So this, transform, this transforms into Insectile Aberration, which is a 3-2 with flying. I've got a counter spell in the form of Dissipate, Dream Twist, Forbidden Alchemy, Fortress Crab was in here. More spirits. This Lantern Spirit's got like a self bounce on it. Lost in the Mist, Makeshift Mauler. Remember I said uh, zombies were in blue as well. So another another um, enemy flashback card at uncommon. More flyers. Card and the card that cares about other cards with flashback. Another enchantment, another flashback card. We've got pump in blue here, so we get to enchant a creature, give it two two and, and fly. And uh, Stitch Drake was interesting. It, it um, had this additional cost to it where um, in order to cast this 3-4 for 1 and 2 blue you needed to exile a creature card from your graveyard flying on that and Stitch's Apprentice there were uh, homunculus tokens in the set as well Next up we have black. So now we're into the, the colour of both zombies and vampires. Abattoir Ghoul. Card draw in the form of Walter's Reap. Bitterheart Witch. 
with Death Touch on it. Um, it's a, 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 a tutor curse. Oh, sorry. A curse for tutors. No. <laughs> what am I saying? A tutor for curses. I'm getting really muddled up here. Brain Weevil had intim Intimidate on it. Another uh, allied flashback card, Bump in the Night, Corpse Lunge. Well, there's a curse, Curse of Oblivion. Enchant player at the beginning of Enchanted Player's Upkeep. That player exiles two cards from his or her library. Dead Weight was in here. Telegraph Ghoul. One for a 2-2, two, two, but it enters the... Battlefield Tapped, Disciple of Gristlebrand. So this is one of these uh, indicator cards. Um, so it's like signature card where uh, it's one of the lower rarity that, that sort of indicates a character in the set. Um, in this case, Gristlebrand. Wrath Noble. Ghoul Caller's Chant. So it's no surprise in uh, the Graveyard Matters sets to uh, see ways in which you can get stuff back from the grave. With some deformity, mana skeleton with regeneration on it. Markov Patrician, more of the Maya, Moan of the Unhallowed. Another card that generates black zombie creature tokens with flashback on it. Putting fen snakes in here, screeching bat, which is a transform card, so that transforms into stalking vampire. More enchantments, more vampires. Typhoid rat, which had death touch on it. More vampires, victim of night. So two black destroy target non vampire, non werewolf, non zombie cr creature, and village cannibals. Whenever another human creature dies, put a 1 1 counter on village cannibals. So you can see 1 1 counters were a thing in this set. Red now, Ashmouth Hound, Brimstone Volley, Burning Vengeance. So, no surprise in red, we've got our direct damage. Remembering that vampires were in red. Another curse. Got a couple of curses here. Enemy flashback card, enemy colour flashback card. Another enchantment. Gets plus two, plus two and attacks if turn, each, attacks each turn if able. There seems to be uh, one of these in each of the colours so far. Geist Flame. Burn spell with flashback. And we're Watch Keep. The human warrior werewolf. So our werewolves are coming in. Remember they were in red. Infernal plunge. You know you will often see cards like this in red which uh, generate mana. Kessing wolf. Kessing wolf. Night revelers or vampires because we're in red. Some devils in red. So obviously, um, you know, although this was a tribal theme and the tribes were mainly based around each of the two color, two allied colors, that's not to say that other tribes weren't in that color as well. Got things like elementals, obviously, in red. More transform cards. Okay. 
Moving on to the next colour, Ambush Viper with Flash and Death Touch on it. Pretty cool looking artwork on there. Averson's Pilgrim, so it's green but it um, taps for white mana. Boneyard Worm. Oh, here's, here's a card with Morbid on it. I don't think we've mentioned this yet, although I mentioned it at the start. So with Morbid, you may put a card uh, you may put that card onto the battlefield instead of putting it into your hand if a creature died this turn. So what you'll find with the Morbids is is that they were an additional condition uh, or an um, additional, what's I suppose an upgrade to a spell um, if, if a creature had died. So in the case of Caravan Vigil, Caravan Vigil, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. And with the Morbid Clause, what Morbid does is you may put that card onto the battlefield instead of putting it on into your hand if a creature died this turn. Dark Thicket Wolf. So here's another one. So Festerhide Board has Festerhide Boar has Trample on it, but with the Morbid Trigger. Festide Boar enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it if a creature died this turn. So it's always something if a creature died this turn with Morbid. Foreman's Rise, another enchantment. Nought to the Bone. Life Gain with Flashback on it. You can see there's Flashback all over the place, obviously. Yeah. Got Defenders in green, Plants. Humans in green, as I'd mentioned. Uh, Hollowhenge Scavenger is interesting is in that it's a vanilla creature before you consider the Morbid Clause. So it's a 4-5 for 3 and 2 green. So with its Morbid, when Hollowhenge Scavenger enters the battlefield, if a creature died this turn, you gain a fine of 5 life. Kindercrack Catch, another vanilla creature. Lumber Knot's got Hexproof on it. Whenever a creature dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Lumber Knot. Lots of fun with counters in this set. Get stuff back from your graveyard. Free, free green thing. Destroying artifacts or enchantments, another thing in the form of naturalize. Let's prey upon. This is the, I was mentioning that fight with a thing in the set. So, target creature you control fights, target creature you don't control. Ranger's Guile gives a creature plus one plus one hexproof. Spider Spawning was in here, four and a green. Put a one, two green spider creature token with reach onto the battlefield for each creature card in your graveyard. And it had a <coughs> um, <coughs> excuse me, enemy colour flashback cost of six and a black. Spidery Grasp. Travel preparations also cared about counters, or dealt with counters, should I say. And more humans, this one's got a morbid trigger on it. So it's a 2-3, but if you manage to trigger morbid, uh, you return a creature card at random from your graveyard to your hand. And Wreath of Geists. Moving on to our enchantments, um, some nice flavour enchantments in the set. Uh, sorry, flavour um, artefacts. So we've got Blazing Torch, equipped cre creature can't be blocked by vampires or zombies, and a quick creature has tap, sacrifice Blazing Torch. Blazing Torch deals two damage to a target or creature, and it's equipped for one. So, you know, effectively what's happening is you're throwing the torch at a uh, had a creature. Butcher's Cleaver cares about humans using it. Cellar door. Cobbled Wings. You know, we'll always get cards within uh, magic sets, either uh, artifacts or, you know, as we see, we've seen in white and blue, 
that will give things flying. Demon Horbart was uh, plus four, plus two, but also um, has an additional, uh, there's this interesting equip cost to where you sack a creature to equip it. Galvanic Juggernaut, Ghoul Caller's Bell. One of the things I've noticed about, and this isn't coming out too well on camera, but in going through um, sets where I've pulled from a number of different boosters, how quite dramatic the difference in some of the the ink is on certain cards. You kind of, you can see that very clearly, but there's a clear difference between these outer two and this middle one in terms of the uh, the colours there. Graveyard Shovel, Mask of Avacyn, Silver Inlaid Dagger, Equipped gets plus two plus zero, as long as a quick creature is a human it gets an additional plus one plus zero, equipped for two, Sharpened Fitch Forks, so some very, you know, very flavorful, flavor, very flavorful equipment here, Traveler's Amulet, Um, wooden stake. No surprise to see a wooden stake in the set when you have uh, vampires. Okay. And um, I don't think, oh, there might be one in here. Let me just see if I've got any land. Oh, yeah, there we go. So, one card that was uh, pretty important non basic land and uncommon here Ghost Quarter. So, tap, add one to your mana pool, sacrifice Ghost Quarter, destroy target land. His controller may search his or her library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield, then shuffle his or her library. There's great utility on that card. Um, the other thing that co cropped up in uh, packs was, was the way of, the, of dealing with the double face cards. So you could actually use these if, if you didn't want to be flipping the card necessarily in a sleeve as you went along. Uh, one alternative was to use these. Um, special marked mark cards to sort of indicate the presence of a double face card um, and then what could happen is once that was played you could actually bring the the, the, the genuine double face card into play and there was a whole load of these. These just cropped up in boosters to basically enable you to do this. Okay. So the next thing we'll have a look at is we'll go through the um, intro packs and the uh, event deck, the one event deck that I bought. So there were five intro packs um, and the, the intro packs were, that's my list, or intro decks, uh, Spectral Legion, which was white, blue, Eldritch Onslaught, which was blue, red. Death the Dominion, which is black green. Oh, sorry, blue. Gr no, yeah, hang on, start again. Yeah, Death the Dominion was was a black green deck. The Carnal of Blood was black red, and Repel the Dark, which was white green. That sort of threw me for a moment because um, you'll notice there that they didn't sort of keep with the the cycle of the allied color. They actually so the this Deathly Dominion deck, which is the the black or green, is obviously um, enemy colours. So in this particular deck, what you had was um, Scargsdale High Priest was the was the foil rare, the lead card, if you like. So one of the black creature, human cleric, one two with morbid on it, a morbid tap. Tap to untapped creatures you control, put a 5-5 five, five black demon token, sorry, creature token flying onto the battlefield. Activate this ability only if a creature died this turn. And Moldegraph Monstrosity, 4 and 3 green for an 8-8 eight, eight creature insect with trample. When Moldegraph Monstrosity dies, exile it, then return two creature cards at random from your graveyard to the battlefield. Disciple of Gristlebrand is in this deck, so we'll go through the uncommons first. There's a couple of those. Reassembling Skeleton from M12. So again with the intro decks, they're not going to be exclusively from the set. They're going to feature cards from 
earlier sets that would have been would have been legal in the standard format. Lumber knot, which has hex proof on it, more cut banshee, a couple of those, Hollet Henge Scavenger, a couple of those, make a wish, demon demon male howback, howback, however you say that, and then our uncommon uh, sorry our commons, uh, typhoid rats, ambush viper, warpath ghoul, a couple of those, devouring swarm. We've got pretty high variance here, lots of one ofs brain weevil. Oh another devouring swarm. Festerhide boar, a couple of those, woodland sleuth, two of those, sumberwald spider, dead weight, caravan vigil, prey upon, there's a doom blade in here from the core set. Alters Reap, a rampant growth from the core set, a couple of those, naturalize, and then a very simple mana base here. There's no sort of necessarily any, fi any fixing going on, so we've got basically our swamps uh, with each of the uh, three types of artwork represented and our forests. So, pretty straightforward. There was no, um, in, the, well, in terms of non-basic lands, there was no mana fixing going on um, with it with, at common, which, you, which is you know a thing you're seeing more with uh, recent sets now, where they're making it a lot easier um, to go down the, the sort of two-color, you know, route just just when you're drafting. So another another one of the decks. I think maybe when I when I chose which ones to to buy with the intro packs, I decided to go with the looks like I decided to go with the enemy colours um, because here this one as well is is a blue red Eldritch onslaught deck, which is not in the allied colours. The allied coloured intro decks were Spectral Legion, which was white blue. Um, the Colonel of the Blood, which was black red, and Re Repel the Dark, which was white green. Sturmgeist is our, our lead rare, it's the, the foil. Three and two blue creature spirit with flying whenever, I'm um, sorry, Sturmgeist power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. When Sturmgeist deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Charmbreaker Devils was the other rare, five and a red. Creature Devil, beginning of your upkeep, return an instant or sorcery spell at random from the graveyard to your hand. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Charm Breaker Devils gets plus four, plus zero until end of turn. It was a four four. Murder of Crows is in this deck. Got Scourge of Gaia Reach. Got Cellar Door. Desperate Ravings. So not many uh, creatures out on common there. A couple of those. Burning Vengeance. Rolling, r rolling, trembler. I think that is. Grasp of phantoms. Into the moor of hell. Ghoul caller's bell. Dream twist. A couple of those. Actually, three of those. Silent departure. Geist Flame. This is a real heavy um, non-creature spell deck, which is not not you know not unusual in in blue red like counter burn style deck. There's lots of card draw going on here. There's a curse. Seems to be a mill effect here, but you could actually. Uh, Mill yourself. Merk, Merfolk Mesmerist. Yeah, no, it looks like he has a. This is a strange deck. Deranged Assistant. Three of those. 
armored scabs. Yeah, certainly wants to be putting cards into uh, into the graveyard. Fortress Grant. It looks like most of the the uh, creatures are at common, and then again our our mana base very simple, just uh, red blue basic lands here with the uh, three different types of artwork. I'll have to have a closer look at this deck. It looks sort of really interesting because um, man, there's a a heavy there's like this sort of self potential for self mill here or oh, self mill. Um, and I'm just looking at the cards. It, there's obviously got to be a payoff for actually putting. Um, putting creatures into your graveyard in some form. Anyway. <clears throat> it's funny when you go through these and you haven't looked at the deck for a while, there's that moment when you're going, well, what does this deck actually do? Um, and sometimes that can actually be a bit tricky with intro decks because you know they are they do have some sort of diluted concepts in them and when you start looking at them you, you know it's easy to sort of when you first look through the first few cards you you sort of think it's doing one thing and then it turns out it's doing something quite different so let's see if our our um event deck is a bit better focused um so there was a couple of event decks i bought this one which was the uh there's a mono white uh, event deck. So my guess, this was called Hold the Line. So that was the mono white. There was one called Death Fed, which was a blue, black, green one. Playing the deck. So it's a beatdown deck, low cost creatures. So yeah, so it's like mono white soldiers. Uh, type build going on here, so you can see the stuff from Innistrad, the Corsair, and uh, Mirrodin block, Mirrodin besieged, uh, Scars of Mirrodin, and New Phyrexia are in here. So with with any of these decks, you know, at the time you had to be a bit mindful of like when were the cards going to be rotating out? You know, what was the longevity of the deck? So just to go through here, we're probably going to see a lot more rares in this because it's an event deck. So we've got Champion of the Parish, Elite Inquisitor, Mirren Crusader, which has double strike and protection from black and from green. A couple of those. Honor of the Pure was another rare in here. White creatures you control get plus one, plus one. A couple of those in here. Elite Vanguard, so we're now moving on to our commons. So you should see this has got probably a fairly low curve on it. It's one white for a 2 1. Quarter Paladin, one and a white for a 3 1 with Battle Cry on it. So this was from the previous block. Fiend Hunter, one and two white for a 1 3 with pretty comprehensive abilities. Got Exile on it. And there's four of those. There's um, Oblivion Ring was in here from the core set. And you get a full play set of those. Some equipment, Silver Inlay Dagger. Butcher's Cleaver, which cares about humans in terms of uh, giving Giving, giving it life link. Doom Traveller, so we're now on to our commons in this deck. So again, you know, take a note of that, the low mana curve here. Gideon's Law Keeper. Bonds of Faith, cares about humans. I found this card actually really interesting. Um, so it's a one and a white 
enchant an aura and you enchant a creature with it. And here's the, the thing. Um, if it's a human, then it gets plus two, plus two. But if it's not, then it can't attack or block. So that, that card's got really interesting utility on it. And then our mana base, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're playing mono white, so we don't really have any utility lands in here. In white, it's all just basic lands uh, with artwork from Innistrad. Now, with with all the um, with all the event decks that we don't have event decks anymore, but uh, with these, you always got a, a sideboard. So we got three Nile spell bombs, three Sutra priests, three Leonin, actually four Leonin relic ward, a playset of celestial purges, and a Nevermore. So there we have the event deck. Yeah, I found the event decks to be a bit of hit and miss. Um, I really like that uh, that one. I think I showed you the the uh, there was a red a red event deck which came out fairly early on in in event deck histories, which was really cool. It had goblins in it and low cost creatures, a very aggressive deck, and and made a pretty good deck with just a few modifications. But some of the um, event decks that they released, I think pretty much later on were pretty grim. So the other thing I want to show you is the um, the Graveborn deck, which was this uh, premium deck. So this came out on November 18th. Now, let me just show you the, the actual deck box. So one thing I didn't mention when I've done other um, of these special, they, they only ever released three of these premium decks before they discontinued them. Um, there was a Slivers, there was a, a Burn one, and there was this one, which was Graveball, which was graveyard based. They all came with these sort of nice foil deck boxes, which of course once you sleeved up the uh, the cards were unusable. But it was pretty cool. I, I don't know if uh, Wizards have ever done foil deck boxes before. So that's pretty nice, just to, to I actually kept this. Um, I have a box full, full of uh, like deck boxes. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I must be, I mean, it's nice that I've still got them so I can bring them out when I'm doing these these set of videos. Um, so yeah, that was one of them. I'm just seeing if I've got the, it's been the other box. So this got sleeved up. So if you've seen other videos I've done on these, you will know that these were all foil decks. Um, these, although they weren't super popular, I think they were sort of popular with a certain um, type of player and it really depended on, on the deck that was coming out. So I remember when I tried to get hold of one of these, I had real problems initially. Um, this had a reanimator theme. Um, and at the time, one of my local local game stores, they 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 were sort of embarking on legacy, I think, and so there were cards in here that were quite um, important in um, certain decks, particularly obviously reanimator decks, and they were quite difficult and expensive to get hold of. So there were actually some people that were actually buying uh, multiple copies of this deck so they could get play sets of certain key reanimator cards and then basically selling the the unwanted cards back to the store for credit um, which was tricky if you were just getting a hold of these like I was just purely for, from a collector standpoint so you can see um, a, a, my attraction to this uh, you know I mean they were all foil um, interestingly enough again I think I showed you with the other ones these didn't actually distort too badly um, you know there is this problem with foil cards where they will they will warp because of moisture, but these have not fared too badly. The cards are from all over um, Magic's history, um, and you'll see some very interesting things in here. Like the the mana base looks really strange if you're not used to, to seeing a reanimator. 
uh, reanimator deck. Because some of these cards you don't really care about casting them using using mana. So you'll notice that um, there's, there's stuff in here that's, that's basically off colour for the mana base. So just going through, we've got uh, Sphinx of the Steel Wind, which is five white, blue, black artifact creatures, Sphinx, flying, flying, first strike, vigilance, lifelink, protection from red and from green. Croesus the Purger. Um, nice it's in foil, you know, particularly if you want to, you know, you know you're going to be using that for uh, as a commander in EDH. Three blue, black, red for a six, six legendary creature dragon with flying. Whenever Croesus the Burger deals combat damage to a player, you may pay two and a black. If you do choose a colour, then that player is, reveals his or her hand that discards all cards of that colour. Got Inkwell Leviathan in here with uh, Island Walk, Trample and Shroud on it. Verdant Force, Blazing Archon. So one thing you'll notice is the the casting cost is, on these is super high, um, and for some of these with the mana base base, it would be difficult, if not impossible, to cast these regularly. And we'll see why in a moment how that how that's got round. We've got Terrestodon in here. So there's all these super large creatures, Avatar of Woe. So now let's actually look at the rest of the cards and it will sort of get some clue as to how those cards might be brought into play. So we've got Entomb in here, uh, single black. Search your library for a card and put that card into your library, then shuffle your library. So this obviously gives, gives us a clue. We've got Hidden Horror. Um, when Hidden Horror enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you discard a creature card. Interesting. There's two of those. Reanimate. Single black. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. You lose life equal to its converted mana cost. So you can start to see there's going to be cards in that are going to get cards either from your library or from your hand into the graveyard. And then cards that are going to get them out onto the battlefield. And that's basically how you get round very large casting costs and it allows you to use cards that don't necessarily reflect your mana base. Couple Therapy, name a non lane card, target player reveals his or her hand and discards all cards with that name. It's got flashback on it, sacrifice a creature. Sickening Dreams. Animate Dead. A way of getting stuff from your graveyard. Actually, three of those. Zombie infestation. Buried alive. So again, the point with these decks is to give you um, cards from all over Magic. They're not necessarily what they're going for is high variance here, so you can get this really interesting experience going on. It's buried alive. Diabolic Servitude, Dread Return, Putrid Imp, so we got a um, Threshold in here. Something that, you know, again you'll see this where you've got cards in here which while they don't help stuff get into the graveyard, what they are doing is saying, well, you know, I've got this graveyard that's well stocked, I might as well also take advantage of it, you know, have cards with synergies with having a full graveyard. Face this butcher. Twisted abomination. There's duress in here. Exhume. Last rites. Eben stronghold. So we've got some utility land here. Um, which basically is able to generate extra mana if you sacrifice it. And Crystal Vein. Polluted Mire. So this is the interesting thing. You can see here, the lands here either generate uh, black mana, extra black mana, extra colourless mana, or have, like in this case, a cycling utility there is actually no way here of you casting 
um, those large creatures apart from the black ones. You can't hard cast them. Um, and so obviously the only way is basically by using the the graveyard interaction spells, which is the whole point of the stick. So you can see here a key point with reanimator <coughs> is that uh, you're basically bypassing the need to cast your large creatures. So you have a, a suite of large creatures which are incredibly impactful and then you have uh, basically cards that allow you to cheat them into play by utilising the graveyard. And then again with some cards which will take the, the fact that you have a full graveyard and, um, and exploit that. Okay so that's it for this particular episode. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that look through um, the, that sort of last quarter with Innistrad and the premium deck. It's quite a long video. There's lots of different things that I thought were worth touching on. Um, next week I'm going to have a break from, from the series. We're in a nice point where we, we're like the end, last episode of series two. And then we'll moving, be moving on after next week's break. The following week we're going to move on to series three, which is going to be uh, 2012. So lots of interesting things in, in that particular area. You know, we've got Dark Ascension, Everson Restored, the next core set, and lots of other things that sort of came out as well. Um, and another thing that I, I want to do, and I'm going to be doing a video on this, I did mention that um, I had a deck which was a an early commander deck, which was actually, this is a, a paper version of... Um, a deck that a couple of well, one of the two decks that existed online only. Um, they actually had a commander product out before the paper commander product online. So as a project, I went through and tracked down all the cards bar one. There is a card uh, that I didn't uh, get because of cost, but I've got the deck, and I'm going to go through this at some point, and we'll take a look at this. This is actually. Uh, um, Lots of graveyard shenanigans going on, so it's rather appropriate. But uh, that's hopefully something that I'm going to actually do, um, start doing maybe next week, and then it might be an ongoing series. We'll see how we go with it and what sort of feedback I get. But uh, there's a there's a teaser, so we're going to be looking at the uh, Zero Ar Arian uh, Commander deck. You can see I've got a nice Italian one here. I just wanted a a black border one. Um, so anyway. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.